this is Greg Troutline with Offshore Engineer TV, and we're very pleased to be joined today again by Philip Lewis, the Director of Research, World Energy Reports, to discuss WER's new study into offshore wind turbine and installation vessels. Phil, World Energy Reports, as I just said, has released a new study that identifies the number of turbine and foundation vessels required for future offshore wind growth. What are the key findings? Oh, well, uh, first of all, thanks for having us uh, back, Greg. Um, so yeah, there's more than 100 offshore wind turbine and foundation installation and maintenance vessels will be required uh, for offshore wind projects planned over this decade. Uh, our report focuses on the installation market. We see that demand will not be supplied by the existing fleet. New installation vessels or upgrades of existing vessels are required. This represents a $10 billion plus opportunity for engineering firms, shipbuilders, and conversion yards, equipment suppliers, service providers, and those who finance marine assets. So what is driving all this activity? Well, the starting point is the forecast growth for offshore wind capacity. Now that's being initially driven by government support linked to energy transition policies, um, and later by off-grid demand to support the electrification of the wider economy. Now, from 32 gigawatts of installed capacity at the end of 2020, we forecast a global capacity of 235 gigawatts by 2030, of which 226 gigawatts is expected to be uh, bottom fixed. The bottom fixed capacity additions through 2030 will be achieved with around 20,000 new wind turbines. Um, more than 95% 95, uh, 95 of these will be installed on steel monopiles or jackets. It should be noticed, uh, notice, uh, noted that future installations will require new capacities and capabilities. Almost all of the current fleet of international WTIVs will be technically redundant as installation vessels by 2025, not as maintenance vessels, but as installation vessels. Both in my offshore engineer and my maritime reporter title, mm -hmm. technically redundant is a very uh, often used phrase. What is creating this technical redundancy that you mentioned? Well, uh, Greg, it's a combination of, um, of several technical drivers. In our report, we conduct a deep dive into six technical drivers, turbine size, hub height to which a vessel crane must reach, foundation size to be installed, carrying capacity of the installation vessel, and water depth in which uh, vessels will operate. Starting with the growing output of wind turbines, the speed of technology change has been rapid. Turbine output has grown from three to four, uh, three to four megawatt turbines at the beginning of the last decade to eight to 10 megawatt turbines installed today, and 12 to 15 megawatt turbines to be installed starting 2024 to, sorry, 2022 to 2024. We anticipate that the next evolution of offshore turbines will be the 20 megawatt unit, uh, which will appear around the end of the decade. Now, what does that mean when we're talking about installation uh, capabilities? Well, bigger turbine output comes from a bigger swept area as a result of larger rotor diameters. This means longer and heavier blades. These blades need supporting by large hubs, and the whole powertrain in the nasal at the top of the turbine tower will become bigger and heavier. A taller and heavier wind turbine tower is a result of the longer blade and heavier components. The tower sits on a foundation which needs to be bigger to support the increased loads of the larger turbines. Only one of today's wind turbine installation vessels uh, can currently install the next generation 12 to 14 megawatt turbines without upgrading. Now, I mentioned the impact of larger turbines on foundations. The other factor impacting foundations is water depth. Simply put, offshore wind farms are moving to deeper waters. The monopile foundations for deeper, uh, deeper water large turbine projects are outside the capacities of most of the current installation fleet today. We understand also that WTIVs have been install installing foundations as well as turbines. Do you see that continuing in the future? Well, that's a good question, Greg. Um, foundation installation requirements are rapidly changing. Until now, this requirement has been largely satisfied by WTIVs, as you say, and heavy lift vessels designed for the oil and gas and port salvage market. WTIVs will still install turbines, 
But due to the market demand for turbine installation, most of their time will be spent installing turbines uh, than, or sorry, more of their time will be spent installing turbines and foundations. Market requirements are now shifting to purpose-built wind foundation installation vessels capable of handling the largest monopart foundations. Uh, more specialized vessels will be required for this purpose going forward. We appreciate your time. I just have one more question. Okay. In your report, we understand that you differentiate the international market from the Chinese market. Why and how do these segments differ? Well, we're splitting the markets as the installation fleet is largely split along these lines. Uh, the international fleet has grown from the traditional Northeast uh, European, uh, sorry, Northwest European market to include Taiwan and Japan, and will soon be active in the US and South Korean markets. However, I should note that installation vessel owners will also have to navigate their way through evolving local content requirements in Taiwan, Japan, the United States, and elsewhere. In our report, we analyze the existing fleet uh, capacity and capabilities, review new building and upgrading plans, and conclude that there will be a shortage of foundation installation as well as turbine installation capability in the international market by 2025. And that's triggering the new building and upgrading activity. The technology uh, driven changes to the Chinese fleet will occur a little later. Uh, we're predicting around after the middle of the decade. China is a relatively closed and busy offshore wind market with its own demand drivers. Chinese WTIVs are unlikely to operate site out of China. In fact, it's more likely to see smaller installation vessels redeployed to the Chinese market, especially as they become less technically suited to international demand. Okay. Phil, as always, I appreciate your time and I can't wait to read the full report. Thanks, Greg.